a lot of mistakes. In today's video, we are taking our toy hauler camping for the very first time. We're staying at a campground, a state park called Dillon State Park. We've been there before. It's pretty open, pretty easy, and I booked us a full hookup site. And that's really all we're trying to learn and do in today's camping experience is hook up the toy hauler completely for the very first time. We have never been camping in an RV before or a camper. We've never done full hookups and anything. So this is gonna be all a big learning experience. And I will say if you guys see us doing anything incorrectly or if we could be doing something better, please leave a comment below. And Jordan has a YouTube channel as well and he's gonna be posting his own separate video from this one. So subscribe if you haven't done so yet and let's head to the campground. Okay, first time Jordan's gonna be backing into a site. So I'm gonna go check really fast and make sure there's no crazy debris. Looks like we just got a lot of rain, so there's a lot of mud all over the place. And of course there's neighbors everywhere because this isn't camping, this is expensive trailer park living. That distribution hitch makes a lot of noise. This is seriously his first first time ever doing this you guys he's doing really well I'm gonna wave him back a little bit more yeah this uh this campground makes it really easy it's all one way pull through back in sights so you did good babe yeah I was gonna tell you you can probably back up a little bit more too good job for your first time <laughs> Perfect. And now we come back over here and flip the breaker. Oh, I just heard the microwave beep. So the reason we do this is now we can go ahead, walk into the camper and hold on, let me switch you around. Like, let's say it was a 90 degree day, we wanted to go get the air conditioner turned on, but for our purposes today, it's beautiful. It's like 55 degrees Fahrenheit, overcast. We need to turn. We didn't check the side to side level. We already forgot to level the camper first before we plug it in. Well, basically, is it flat? This is a damn good campsite then. No wonder it's been booked out for like six months at a time. Anyway, we're gonna come in here and turn on the refrigerator. Let's go finish this up. So we have these little leveling bubbles here that show us if it's level uh, front to back and side to side. You should probably do it on the floor on the inside. So I'm gonna go check that really fast even though those tell me it's level. It's always good to double check. So we have level right here. I'm gonna set it on the floor. And that is not level at all. So let's fix that. So the level that we just used on the inside said that we're off about an eighth of an inch. So he's going to show me what he was looking at up here. So this is the side to side, that's the front to back. Yeah, I showed them that too. And that is a liar. Now this one's off over here. <laughs> it says this size is low on the over here. Well, so yep. we can put a block under these time to block up. See, we're literally so new at this. All we were focused on was turning on the electricity that we completely forgot to focus on leveling the trailer. <laughs> Perfect. Let's check inside now. It, beautiful. Now we need to measure front to back and we'll do that with the jack. So now that we got it level, it's time to put the rubber wheel chocks in. And then once we're done leveling everything, we'll put the X chocks in. We actually had to buy new X chocks because if you can't tell our axles are so close together, like the ones we originally bought totally didn't fit. Alrighty, time to start disconnecting from the truck. 
I think after. I've seen everyone do it after. Like, as long as you have the wheel chocks down, it's not going to roll. The X chocks make sure it doesn't wiggle. Because this is the part where you have to put the tongue jack down to lift it up enough to take off the sway bar. There you go. Man, that takes a while. You're almost there now. Yeah, this one's pretty loose. Yep, this one's good. Okay. So he's taking the pins out, putting those somewhere safe for now so we don't lose them. <laughs> yep, and then you put them up on those little nubs. There you go. Perfect. Now it's time to take these bars off. Huh, just like that. And then store them somewhere safe where you don't lose them or damage them. So now he's taking off the chains and we're going to attempt to disconnect from the hitch. I thought you were supposed to take the chains off last, but as long as no one dies, I guess we're doing it right. So we're lowering it back down so that we can take the locking pin off of the ball hitch off. And then we're going to raise it back up and drive forward. So now it's no longer locked to the ball hitch or the ball joint, whatever it's called. So that's open. Do you need to put the pin back through that? No. Okay. And now we lift the truck up and it pray it doesn't roll down the damn hill. <laughs> it has wheel chocks on. See, I don't know if we're supposed to put the X chocks on before or after. So Jordan just said, I don't know if we're supposed to put the X chocks on before or after. It's It, it won't hurt to put them on now if you want to. We do have them chalked down, but, well, let's find out. There's only one way to find... That's why I was wondering if you should take the chains off yet. My battery's gonna die. What are you doing? I'm gonna put the x on. Okay, he's gonna put the x trucks on. And my battery on my camera's gonna die. Alright, well, I'm just switching to my cell phone to make this easier now because the batteries were not fully charged on my camera. So he's putting in the x chocks. X chalk in. So now he's going to go do the other side. It's just to help me well, get it done quicker. That was really fast. And then you just kind of. Yeah, yeah those, those aren't rolling. rolling. Yeah, good. good job. All right. Nobody's going to die. Peace of mind. <laughs> The truck didn't flex or anything. You're so good. A lot of lube. Can you? Can, hello? <laughs> this, this is a Christian channel. What? Since when? Since when? <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna move. Alright, gonna pull forward now. The one thing we are putting on the truck that has not been installed yet is a transmission cooler. Uh, the transmission's been getting pretty hot pulling this bad boy, and we haven't even put motorcycles in it yet. Okay, so now we're officially leveling from front to back, and then we'll put the stabilizers down. Would you believe that we've already been doing this for like 30 minutes? <laughs> this is, I can get an entire campsite set up with lights and everything in the amount of time it takes to just detach and uh, stabilize a trailer. That's good. All right, since we're all level on the inside, time to put the stabilizers down. We still have to hook up all of the sewage, the water, and I'm ready for a beer. <laughs> Perfect. All right, do that three more times. So since our, our camper runs off gas or propane for heat, we bring this little tiny oil heater um, that runs off electricity, so it's going to help us keep the camper heated without having to use our resources. There we go. And it'll project out from the sides and heat all the way down into the bedroom. Works, no. What do you mean that doesn't work? There's no way for me to tension tighten it. Oh boy. It's like me when you close a jar in the house. I can't open it to save my life. It's like, I guess I don't want pickles today. Mm, no, 
know. I think you're supposed to... You can leave the nozzle on, the one you just took off. Put the... What do you mean you can't get it tight enough? Is it supposed to go in with this? Yeah. So it bends. Because I can't tighten that. I don't know. So we bought a little splitting gauge. It's a pressure regulator, a water filter, and then we have a new hose coming. We bought this one because it was 50 feet, but I think we're going to get a lighter weight version. Oh, water works. So yeah, you can put it on that one. Why does it come out there? I don't know. Maybe you put it on that. I don't know which one to put it on. Oh, uh, there's also instructions right here. So open the other valve and then turn it on see if it sprays everywhere. Like, is this valve open? Oh, yeah. oh, oh my god. <laughs> is that from the filter or from the... Bro, that's disgusting. Ugh. Well, we didn't do that until just now, so it's running clean now. So we just recently watched a YouTube video that told us to go ahead and run the water before you connect it to make sure it gets all the air bubbles out. Because this is what, a 25 foot or a 50 foot? 50 foot? I don't know. So yeah, turn the water on, don't hook it up yet. You want to get all the air out of the hose. Turn it towards you. <laughs> Rude. There is seriously so much to learn and do and remember with this stuff. Oh, it's moving. I'm gonna die if it just starts fire hosing me. <laughs> All right, wait, let it run a little bit longer. It was bubbling. I would turn it on like full blast. That is. That's full blast. Water pressure will not be. Now we connect it to the camper. Technically we should have gone through and like bleached all those connections too. Oh shit, yeah, we're dumb. We're doing a lot of things wrong guys. Now this is the part I can't remember. Cause like once we turn this on, we have to like bleed all the air through the lines, bleed the air through the water heater. Yeah, hopefully all the uh, diverters are closed. I don't know what that means. Well, I hear it. I'm scared, should I go inside and check? Oh God, this feels so overwhelming. I hear water. The shower. Oh, so there's nothing coming out of the sink. Okay. I don't know if that's good or bad. All right, now we have water. So you do that at every second. Yeah, so I'm letting that run. A little bit of bubbles, but not much. Yeah, no more water coming out of there, so this. I think I need to turn the water pump on. Okay, now the fun part comes. We are hooking up sewage, which honestly, there's literally like a bathhouse and a shower house right there. So we don't need to do this, but this is the whole point of why we're camping tonight is to do this for the very first time. So good thing we got a long one. Jeez. Call me disgustingly morbid, but I'm kind of excited to see like the first time we clean this out. <laughs> massive amounts of beer piss. Beer. Just the beer shits. <laughs> oh god. Ew, you're looking in there. There's really nothing down there. How do we put that in? Well, apparently there needs to be a connection. Uh oh. Um, it's in there. It's not going anywhere. Is that accurate? Oh God, all right, leave a comment below if we're doing this wrong. I mean, it's in the hole. It's It'll in the dump. hole, it'll dump. Okay, I'll it's dump not, too. It's not going anywhere. <laughs> Are you dumping? I'm dumping. I'm dumping. I'm dumping too. <laughs> well, I think we're officially all set up. That took like literally an hour, um, but it's our first time and we weren't really sure what to do. So the more we do this, I, and especially if we're on the road for more than just one night, It'll be worth it. Right now, this is just a learning exercise and we're staying one night. But now the fun begins. We get to actually start camping. <laughs>
So to test out the sewage, we're gonna try to flush the gray water first. I think we're allowed to do that. We don't know. No pressure. Kinda right. No pressure. I think I can. So wait, no, leave that closed first. Why? Because that's the security valve. So leave that closed and then open the gray water valve. There you go. You're supposed to be wearing gloves for this too. Gosh, oh, look at you. Now you open. That's disgusting. There's a lot of floaters. It's supposed to be gray, y'all. Okay, you know what? I think we have earned. So I'm keeping my cooler with all of our groceries in it because we're waiting for the refrigerator to cool off. But down here in the magic pits of ice cold deliciousness is a mediocre beverage that doesn't make me fat. So, yeah. This right here is 99% of the reason that I go camping. Paying a lot of money for a second house that you don't really need just to sit outside in gloomy cold weather to drink a beer, priceless. So Jordan and I are just sitting out here talking and thinking of things that we already want to do differently or things that we've learned so far. And the one thing that I want to let you guys know is I didn't buy this to go camping. This is not camping. I bought this to live on the road, basically. And so I have to think of things a bit differently and how I would do things differently. But for right now, it's just kind of really exciting to know that there is a warm bed waiting in there for me, a hot shower, and it's mine. So I'm also super congested, so it's kind of hard to talk. But I wanted to let you guys know that we're not camping right now. We don't intend to go camping with this. <laughs> this is gonna be our home on wheels. It's officially time to start cooking dinner and we have a gas oven, or not an oven, a stovetop range, I guess you would call it. Hi baby, you look creepy. Uh, but we purchased a little hot plate and that's just because the gas runs off of propane our camper runs off of propane to heat so we're trying to use as much electricity as possible to maintain having propane on our camper um, if we ever do any boondocking we're very much going to need the propane but I'm excited to show you what we're cooking for dinner tonight. This is my very first time cooking in a camper. It's a little too cold to cook outside, but we could do that out there as well. So let's get started. I made zucchini spaghetti for myself, regular spaghetti for Jordan, and some, I guess homemade, I didn't make the bread, but I just bought the Italian bread and cooked it in there, melted the cheese, 
I am very hot. Cooking in here, I can't imagine doing, like, I'd never cook in here in the summertime unless it's pouring down rain, but it's never got really smoky. I cooked with the electric cooktop. It did really good. Space is kind of limited, but I made it work out. Jesus, is it, is it good? Good. I also have plenty of leftovers for me because I zoodled up two zucchinis. God oh, damn. That's really good. That is really good. I like the ground turkey. I usually only cook with ground beef because I try to do like high fat, low carb. I might have to start stepping my game up with the ground turkey. I'd say 10 out of 10. Okay, so for all of you guys that tell me you just need dryer lint to start a campfire, look at this. That entire bag is full of dryer lint. And guess how that happened? With a fire starter. Not him, a fire starter. <laughs> If you guys have been enjoying this video so far, I really hope you consider subscribing to the channel. Fun fact, YouTube actually shows me if you subscribe while watching this video. So if this is your first time, welcome you guys. I do all things two wheels over here on the Her Two Wheels channel, except for uh, go camping in my toy hauler for the first time. This is like what, eight wheels? <laughs> hope you enjoy, subscribe to the channel. Well, we officially made it through our first kind of just afternoon of camping for the first time we are in bed this is what I'm like I have so much room over here poor Jordan's like shoved all the way to the other side we're going to uh get a good night's sleep and then see you guys in the morning for coffee and breakfast good morning we survived the night in our pretty nice luxurious it's a lot nicer than most hotels it was pretty comfortable. I was sleeping by the window, so over on Jordan's side. And it got kind of chilly if my arm or my leg stuck out from under the covers, but it was a pretty comfortable sleep. I woke up a lot. So hopefully that just, it's because I'm sleeping in a new place for the first time. It also got down to like 37 last night and we only had the heater on the medium setting. So at like 4.30 I got up and turned it on. I was like, oh yeah. Is that what took you so long? Yeah. I was awake and I thought you were still in the bathroom. I'm like, I hope he's not dying. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I should probably turn this on. It's like 67 in here. So we have our little oil heater that we've been using. And everything so far worked out really good. So I think it's time to enjoy some coffee and make some breakfast. So I brought a jug of iced coffee with me. And then we have these little reusable ice cubes. And this is how... I make coffee in the morning. Officially time to make breakfast. I was supposed to make breakfast burritos, um, but I forgot the tortillas. So we're making omelets. Okay, so I don't want to bring eggshells because it's just extra stuff that you have to clean up. So I bought these little egg beaters. And then this is already pre-cooked Jimmy Dean turkey sausage. So we're gonna heat this up and get started on our Western omelets. I'm gonna make them with some salsa, hot sauce, and sour cream. So, is that okay with you? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm glad I took a video of Jordan's first because mine split apart. <laughs> saturated it with hot sauce mouth is watering time to eat okay maybe you guys can help us with this little dilemma um i noticed that this was all muddy when we first checked into our site and i was like oh maybe it's from the rain no i have learned that all of the water is trickling from under the camper because this morning ours and pretty much every other site that was hooked up with water all of a sudden the water release valve just started dumping so it's completely soaked over there it did it twice this morning um 
And it wasn't just our site, it was pretty much everyone in this area who is hooked up to water. I have no idea why that happened. I think we're gonna go ask the uh, front office to see what happened, why it's doing it, but it makes me feel like we didn't do something wrong because it was happening to everyone else. So if you know the answer to that, leave a comment. <laughs> I'm learning, okay? This is all so new to me. I think we're going to clean up inside a little bit. I'm gonna brush my teeth because I need it very badly. And then I think we're gonna drive around the campground and kind of like scope out some other nice sites. The one thing about this campground, I will say, uh, I don't think there's very many full hookups. So let's go check it out. So we're driving around and we noticed that everything here is really just electric only. There's no water hookups nothing and it just really has my brain like boggled on how do you there's gray water dump sites everywhere i don't know how they work i might have to watch a youtube video but you have to like fill your tanks your freshwater tanks Here. and uh yeah so go ahead and pull up so i can film it so here is a gray water dump station and i genuinely don't know how it works it's all uh it's, it's like uphill. So anyway, I don't know, we'll figure it out. Like I said, this is just so new to me. The anxiety I get from thinking of how much I just washed dishes, how much water I used. We bought a Brita filter. Um, so we have the water coming from the city going through a filter and a pressure regulator. And we also have a Brita filter that we pour the <laughs> filtered city water into. And it tasted pretty good, I tried it out. So it, it, just the whole concept of how much water I used in one night makes me concerned for like not having full hookup sites in the future and i'm obviously overcomplicating it because people boondock and go van lifing all the time and they make it work so well the one person said that they put a bowl in their sink and as they wash fruit and wash their hands when it gets full they just take it outside and dump it because it's just soapy water and it's not going into your gray tank yeah, and filling not, your gray it's not tank black water so. so that's a good idea. Jordan just said, you know, some people when they wash dishes and stuff, they put a bowl in their sink and then when it's full, you just take it outside and dump it instead of filling up your gray tank and having to find a dump station that way. The only so. exception is you can't do that with, uh, what does shower water go into your black water? No, it goes into your gray. Yeah. Cause the only black water is like suit, like when you go to the bathroom, that's black water. Yeah. So. I don't know. We're learning. Thank you guys for coming along this journey with us. But I'll show you some of the campground. It's really pretty here. So this whole area, you can walk around and play disc golf. I'm going to roll the window down. So they have like a whole disc golf course out here. And uh, it's very well maintained. I will say you're always going to be close to your neighbors. I'll show you. You're literally just nut to butt with your neighbors. And um, even though this is a really nice campground, the one thing that I like about other campgrounds and other state parks is trees. Like you can be nuts about with your neighbor and hear things and smell things, but you don't have to see them. Like look at how close all of these campsites are. Campsite. Campsite. <laughs> this is a better view. Dude, that's dope. That's huge. So yeah, these are all very close together and I don't see any, there might be a couple with sewage, but I don't see any. Yeah, so far I don't see any full hookups. So we took a quick little drive down to the beach. The beach is probably about a half a mile to a mile away from the campground, but this is Dillon State Park because this is the Dillon Dam Reservoir. This is the beach area. Uh, I remember growing up and coming here in the summertime with my mom to swim. And there's like a, a little baby kiddie pool right behind us too. But the water level looks super low right now. But summertime, this place is awesome. Oh, there goes Trevor. Where are you going? Okay, we're back in the camper, and before I really start cleaning things up, I kind of wanted to show you one of my favorite parts about this. Obviously, we have the kitchen, and I've been using the kitchen. It's been working great, but this is definitely luxury. So we did have to remove one of the shelves to put the Brita filter and my coffee in there, but that's a lot of space for a refrigerator. It was just really nice knowing that I could put all of my stuff in here and it's tied down 
We also have the freezer with these uh, reusable ice cubes. Alrighty, I have everything all cleaned up in here, locked up, put away, got the table all folded up. We actually, the table used to be right here, uh, but we moved it because we have plans for this area, which involve Midgey. So, Jordan. Oh, one more thing. We removed the stairs that come with this because they were kind of f***ed up. And if you were on the tiniest amount of uneven ground, you couldn't put the stairs down, you couldn't shut the door. Also, it wouldn't be a camping trip with me without them mowing. So I did the inside and Jordan is taking care of the outside. How's it going? How bad? Good? It was dirty and burnt, not just toilet paper. Just toilet paper. Man, wow. you flushed it without me. I wanted to see the dumps. Well, I got the gray water next. We also, we, this is like TMI y'all, but we didn't dump. <laughs> There's a bathroom like right there, so we just used that for the first time. We just wanted to make sure everything like, you know, worked. This green hose connects right here to the black water flush. We're very lucky that our camper has a black water flush. Otherwise, you have to hold the, the, the black water tube, the sewage tube, and clean it out with a, with a hose. So this just kind of like does it all for us. We don't have to disconnect anything. Jordan is wearing gloves and we are going to sanitize everything after we're done. So this is the glorious part that people don't really talk about when you learn how to go camping for the first time. I'm just standing here with my foot on the flusher. I have all my trash can and stuff, but my foot is on the flusher and we're refilling about three to five gallons of the black water tank um, just because you're supposed to keep water in it at all times. And we put one of these down there just to help um, deteriorate and help with all of the uh, bacteria and stuff. So I'm sitting here, gonna stand here for a couple minutes and let that refill. Camping. So this next part, Jordan's obviously done with the sewage and so he has a Clorox wipe. They're right there, we keep them all the time. And you wipe down everything that you possibly touched with your gloves. So everything should be nice and clean now. Sanitary, wash your hands, it's disgusting. I'm not helping him at all, you guys. He's doing this all by himself. Especially with trailers that don't have the uh camera yeah like that, right down yep so all he did was like hang down the tailgate and we have a backup camera and it's looking directly at the hitch so kind of a little cheat code but makes it a lot easier so he's gonna readjust center it up a little bit more and then hopefully he's good that might be yeah Put it in park. There you go. See, you have to back it up a little bit further than you need because when you put it in park, it rolls forward. Good. Yeah, that looks excellent. Yeah. Good. good job, babe. Damn, you're so good. I'm really good at getting in the hole. Don't. Oh God, jeez. Don't don't say that. This is a Christian channel. All right, time to hitch up. I forgot one thing. Oh, yep. <coughs> See? I'm telling you guys, we're making a lot of mistakes, but we're learning about them before things get detrimental. <laughs> there it goes. Oh, yeah. Like a glove. So, another mistake was made. Jordan was just going to keep lowering it and lifting it all the way up, and we forgot to put the uh, distribution hitch on, so... I just never remember to pull out. Uh, can you not? This is ridiculous. I'm gonna have to bleep half this video. <laughs> so Jordan's gonna teach me how to put this thing on. So we're, we're actually up pretty high. Yeah. So that's nice. That works. Oh. I thought you. And you think I can do this? You said you wanted to. Well, yeah, but you're you like said. yanking it. You're an independent young woman that needs no man. You called me young. Too. I am pretty, thank you. You need the tool. Does it matter which way is up? No. So this needs to come out more, right? Well, you can. You might be able to fit it in there, I don't know. Okay. 
And then you just line up the hole and put the cotter pin through. Or the D-ring, I should say. It's not a cotter pin. Two. So, yep. this one. Yep, all the way forward. Yep, you're good. Once it gets on top, yep. Slide on to the next one, yep. Easy. You're technically not rotating, but it's good. Oh, well, there you I go. mean, it's on. Now it's on, so yep. Now it yep, just like that. I need to shove that in. Time to take off the X shocks. Just like that. Easy peasy. That's a wrap. Officially got everything put away and trailing her back home. I think we did good, honey. <laughs> so, the one thing we are going to do is I am going to activate my. GoPro that's hanging up in there and I want to see how badly things rock around. <laughs> and there is... Oh, I can't... Okay, so when you're recording, you can't watch the preview. So I can only watch it while it's not recording. But I can insert the clip for you guys. All right, we're finally back home, and this is how Jordan has to park the camper. Keep going back because of the jack, remember? You did that in three minutes. And that is a wrap on our very first time taking our camper camping. Um, if you guys enjoyed this video and if you made it this far, seriously, thank you so much. This was incredibly nerve wracking, but at the end of the day, I think we're, uh, I think we're smitten. <laughs> I still don't think this is camping, but hopefully you subscribe to either mine or my husband's channel. And if you like seeing Jordan in more of these videos, please leave a comment below until my next one, which will be probably back on two wheels. You guys be good and I'll see you later.